game settings. They affect how the game looks, acts, sounds, and more. The higher you raise a setting, the more game performance it may cost. Today, we cover what each setting does to help you decide what's best for you. We also go over the built-in mod manager. Welcome to Gamer Poets, and welcome to Tutorial Tuesday. Throughout the video, you will see two small bits of text on screen. The setting that we are covering, the corresponding any file setting. And in case you need to access the Unity settings.ini, this is its location. Local disk, users, username, app data, local low, Daggerfall Workshop, Daggerfall Unity, settings.ini. Your game saves and screenshots, logs and key bindings are also located here. If you can't see the app data folder or the dot in the extension, watch my modding tips playlist for a few short and to the point videos covering not only how to reveal these things, but plenty of other stuff. Always show this window makes the game configuration window appear on launch. It can only be reactivated from the any file. Vertical sync links your frame rate to your monitor's refresh rate. If you have problems with screen tearing, make sure to activate this. I've not personally experienced tearing with Unity, so what you are seeing is my attempt at providing an example of what it could look like. Swap health and fatigue. By default, the health bar is green and the fatigue bar is red. Activating this swaps the colors, bringing them in line with future test games. Invert mouse. Makes you look down when moving the mouse forward and vice versa. Mouse smoothing makes movement slightly smoother by easing your mouse motion in and out. Left hand weapons. Instead of holding weapons in your right hand, you can now be a lefty. Player nudity. Deactivate this setting and you will have a permanent covering on your junk. However, dangling aside, without this activated, certain quests will not be offered to you. So it may be time for little Johnny to come out of his shell. Click to attack makes attacking require a single click instead of swiping the mouse. SDF font rendering allows for a more modern font to be used. Enable controller, of course, enables the usage of a handheld controller. A link is provided to the suggested controller mapping that you see on screen. Start in dungeon. By default, everyone starts the game in a specific dungeon. Deactivate the setting to begin just outside of it. Dungeon Textures Determines the wall, floor, and ceiling textures that are used in dungeons. Classic chooses textures randomly based on a roll, while Climate keeps things more uniform. Camera Recoil Strength When you take damage, the camera moves back and forth. This setting allows you to adjust the shake strength, or to turn it off altogether. Mouse Sensitivity determines how much the mouse reacts when it is moved. Weapon sensitivity determines how much you need to move the mouse to swing your weapon. Movement acceleration. It's subtle, but this setting determines how quickly you start and come to a stop when walking and running. Weapon attack threshold determines the distance that the mouse needs to be moved to swing your weapon. Bows, drawn release. By default, shooting an arrow is a single click. Activate this setting so that holding the shoot button draws an arrow, and releasing it releases the arrow. Toggle Sneak Toggles whether you have to hold a button to sneak, or to simply click it. Sound Font Displays the currently active sound font being used by the game. If you are familiar with MIDI and sound fonts, you can add your own to the sound font folder and make it active in the game's any. General users will ignore this, unless a mod gives them specific instruction. Alternate Music. When turned off, you get to hear the original Daggerfall quality soundtrack. When activated, you hear the optimized Yamaha YMF262 keyboard remaster. Sound and Music Volume. Adjust the loudness of all in-game sound and music. Spell Lighting. Toggles whether or not spells emit light when cast. 
Spell Shadows. Toggles whether or not Spell Light will cast shadows. Tooltips. Toggles the ability to see inventory item information when hovering over an item. Delay. Delays the tooltips from appearing when hovering over an item by the specified amount of time. Text and background color changes the color of the tooltip text and that of the tooltip background. Crosshair toggles whether or not the in-game crosshair appears on screen. Vital indicators toggles whether or not the damage you suffered or the fatigue and magicka you use will be quickly displayed in a different color on the vital bars. Interaction mode icons allows you to choose between various styles of interaction mode icons. Steal, Grab, Info, and Dialogue. Arrow Counter toggles whether or not you want to see how many arrows you have when your bow is drawn. Freescaling toggles whether or not you want the user interface to stretch to fit the screen while ignoring aspect ratio. Countdown Quest and Journal Clocks changes the journal system to show how many days remain to complete a quest rather than how many days were given at its start. Inventory Info Panel utilizes a portion of the inventory screen to display the details of the selected item. Enhanced Item List increases the number of visible inventory item tiles from 4 to 16. Talk Window Modern Style alters text formatting when speaking to NPCs by using right and left justify and different colors. Buff Icons Layout determines the size and the placement of enchantment icons. Helm and Shield Material Display toggles whether or not the material type for helmets and shields will appear when hovering over them. Important, as some of these items look the same even though they are of a different material. There are also options to only hide the text for leather, chain, or both. Geographic Background toggles whether or not your character and inventory background will change based on your location in the world adding a bit of immersion. Dungeon Wagon Access Prompt determines whether the game will ask if you want to access your wagon when clicking on the dungeon exit. If disabled, you will simply exit the dungeon as you do when you don't own a wagon. However, as long as you are near the exit, you can still access the wagon from your inventory. Outline Regional Map Locations toggles a thin outline around places of interest on the game map. This is particularly helpful for those who are colorblind. Mod System allows mods to be used. Deactivate for debugging. Asset Injection allows mods with loose files to work. Compress Modded Textures. When activated, this setting causes graphics to be compressed to help boost performance associated with VRAM. I've yet to see any perceivable visual difference with this activated. Dungeon Ambient Light sets the brightness of the constant fake lighting in dungeons. Night Ambient Light sets the brightness of the constant fake lighting when outdoors during the night. Player Torch Light By default, the player illuminates the area around them as if they were in possession of some type of handheld light, even though they aren't. This setting determines how radiant you are. Item-Based Player Torch when activated, this setting makes it so the player is no longer a literal beacon, but instead requires you to actually have candles, torches, or lanterns to light the way. Activated prior to a new game, your character spawns with a variety of light sources in their inventory. Steal or buy more, purchase oil to refuel, check their quality as damaged light sources have shorter lifespans. In this mode, the brightness of your light is determined by the player torch light slider. Game Console toggles the in-game console on and off. It allows you to use commands such as God Mode. Near Death Warning toggles visual cues when near death. A triple flash, the screen fading darker and back. Alternate Random Enemy Selection uses a different seed to generate dungeon enemies because variety is the spice of life or perhaps the end of it. Advanced Climbing System By default, you can only climb walls in one direction. Activating this setting allows you to hold on to them, move left and right, to jump from walls, and hopefully grab onto another. Combat Vocalizations 
toggles human combat sounds. Includes NPCs and player. Enemy infighting. Toggles whether or not you want enemies to fight amongst each other. Zombies will no longer have bears for pets. This does not affect enemies of the same faction or quest-related NPCs. An enhanced combat AI. By default, combat is generally straight on. Not much movement, basically just trading blows. When activated, NPCs dodge, move side to side, measure their distance to the player, and make better use of ranged and melee tactics. Allow magic item repairs. Allows the blacksmith to repair enchanted items. Instant repair services. Repairing items takes time. With instant repair services, your items are repaired the moment you pay for them. Guild quest player selection. In the vanilla game, you ask your guild for a quest and are given a single task to decide yes or no to. With this setting, you now get a random list of options to choose from. Equip bows in left hand only. Has your character only equip bows in the left hand. This makes it easier to switch between bows and one-handed weapons, though there is a short lag between the switch. Maximum loiter time in hours. By default, in-game loitering can only be done for a maximum of 3 hours at a time. This slider allows you to increase it up to 12. Resolution allows you to choose your screen resolution. It affects how much of your monitor the game fills, as well as the quality of the image. Full screen enables or disables full screen mode. Though for my own setup, I currently have to toggle this via the in-game full screen option for it to take full effect. Quality level determines the pixel quality of sprites. Main filter determines what kind of video filtering is used for game textures. Point being the sharpest, bilinear and trilinear making the images a bit smoother by adding a subtle blurring effect. GUI filter determines what kind of video filtering is used for the graphical user interface. Video filter determines what kind of video filtering is used for in-game movie sequences. Field of view allows you to change the scope of the in-game camera, making what you see narrower or wider. Higher values also make the movement of the distant background more noticeable. So if walking around makes you want to upchuck your sweet rolls, keep this setting lowered. Terrain distance determines how much of the world is loaded around the player. Lower settings have the world fog appear closer, while higher values let you see further into the distance. Shadow resolution sets the visual quality of all game shadows. Dungeon light shadows toggles whether or not objects in dungeons cast shadows. Interior light shadows toggles whether or not objects in buildings cast shadows. Exterior light shadows toggles whether or not objects outdoors cast shadows. Texture arrays. To my understanding, implements modded textures in a similar way that a texture atlas does. It helps to optimize things a bit. For a better explanation, I would check out the Daggerfall Unity forums. Link provided. Retro rendering mode. Sets the graphics quality and resolution to that of classic Daggerfall. Relive the pixelated glory of a time not yet forgot. Retro Rendering Post-Processing determines the Retro Rendering Mode palette options. Mod Management Very simple, especially if you have modded other games. From the main menu, click the Mods button. This is your Mod Manager. The left window allows you to select the mod packages you've installed, to then show their information in the right window, which also allows you to enable or disable each mod. Mod Description is a little overview of the package as written by its author. Extract Text extracts all text assets within the package to a folder in the same location as the INI file. Whenever you have finished making changes to your load order, click Save and Close to return to the main menu. Load Order The left pane Click a mod to highlight it Move it lower or higher from the buttons below. Load Order Priority is shown in the right pane. As with every other game, what loads lowest has the highest number in priority, and what has the highest priority wins in terms of what shows up in game if there is ever a mod conflict. All on enables all mods, 
All off disables all. Some visual settings may only take effect when you are in full screen mode. If your game is windowed and you don't notice a difference after making a setting change, this may be the reason. Also, at ModdingMyWay.com, you can find this entire tutorial in text and links to the specific times in this video for each setting. I also provide images of my own current setting preferences. Thank you for spending some time with me today. I'll see you soon.